Greetings from Fairy Hill, Portland. Nathan Subanayag of Naya Records here with the one Kidasai. Boom, boom. We're this here. Blessings. What a fortunate, fortunate opportunity to link once again, Kitty. My brother. That's pure love. Always, always. You know. Definitely want, want to get into to a couple questions that, that the fans out there really want to know. They want to know it. <laughs> they want to know for sure. Um, uh, so let's get start back in the beginning. How how did you realize your your calling for music, your passion for music? Ooh. It's like it was an innate nature that resided in me, because from a little boy, I'd say from about four years old, I was singing, and yeah. Um, I grew up with that in a surrounding of my mother was a great singer. She could squeeze without even looking as if she's singing the highest notes, the melodies of any one of the great female singers back when I was growing. And my dad was a man who sang at parties and stuff and stuff and the collection of music that was around me. It's like I grew up hearing music at that time. And it's not like nowhere music's permeated right throughout it. In them days as a little, <laughs> little youth, music was heard far in between. There was many made radio station. There was just one telephone, what is this called? I can't remember the name of it. Radio Fusion, that you had this little box in your house and music would play. What artists were playing uh, on? Well, in that time, Jamaica was absorbing the American music, Cuban, Spanish music, Brazilian music, Asian music, merengue. So we grew up with the chachas, the merengas, the bossa novas from from Brazil. Then, at the same time, the Afro rhythms, you know, coming through the high life that I found. But at the same time, the British music was coming through. Later on, I mean, and my father had a gramophone, right? So he had plenty of records, a collection of plenty of records. So I grew up listening to the some of the, what you call them, operatic type of singers, mm. you know, Mario Lanza, uh, Henry Caruso, and as I said, the Paul Rubenstein, this great black man, which was a sort of... Uh, um, actor too, as well, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, but I found that I liked um, music with message. I didn't like the da, 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 da. I like something, sing something. So all of the um, American blues, you grew up hearing the big orchestras, basses, the dukes and such. And uh, that, you know, the South American influence who like the Tijuana brush and some Mexican sounds coming in. So your musical roots was extended like in 360 degrees, absorbing the various influence. Your mentor from Jamaica, your Calypso, da da da, right? And the revival, the Kumina. Right, the Poco, the Bingi. So all of these influences sort of is your roots. And I say, you know, my trunk, my body enveloped all these varieties of influences, genres. And, uh, you know, my heavens is like now a branch is 360 degrees. With three t there's 60 degrees of varieties of musical experience there. So at, at about four, I was singing some type of gospel songs, Christmas carols, and a few of that I've done. And in the later part, you now, you know, all of the American singers that you're hearing, I really liked guys like. Lloyd Parks, no, Lloyd Price, mm -hmm. right? Clyde McFadden. The, um, 
I love Sammy Davis. His voice also, right? You come and you hear the Nat King Cole, the Ray Charles, and Sam Cook. This Sam Cook song. Yeah, and I'm having gays and the various other singers. I like um, Paul Anker, right? And he came out with Oak Carroll. Mm-hmm. You know that song? Mm-hmm. He, I think he wrote, I'll do it my way for Frank. For Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Uh-huh. Love some of Frank's songs too. You know, Bing Crosby was being played a whole lot. Um, Bing Crosby and what was the other one's name? Like how when Tom Jones come up, so Hingleberg comforting. Right, right. Comforting Matt Monroe. Very, very, very the bears. Um, C- Cliff Richards. Was it Cliff Richards from England? I think so. The bears. Did you see um, Rock Around the Clock, the movie? No, I didn't. All right. So, the Chubby Checkers and the Bad Bad Boy. Right. Cap Calloway. Yes, and the Bad Boy. I'm a bad boy. I know I can't forget him. Chuck the Berry. Oh, Chuck Berry. <laughs> right. Get it. Yeah, bad, 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 bad guy. Right. So, you will some pickets, and you this and you that. You Presley coming into the fray. Your fat's domino, you know. you. All right, is all right. So we'll go up around that and, you know, you'll sing these songs. I'd, when I went to school, you know, I, um, I used to get pee actually, from about four or five, to sing. Because if I was singing freely, everybody could hear. But if you put me on the spot by saying, hey, you can sing a song, so sing a song for me. No. No, so they bribed me, yeah. right? <laughs> and the bribe, yeah, I would maybe go inside of this room in the kitchen and you stay on the veranda and I sing inside. If after a while, if I feel in the spirit of singing, then I'll just free up and be singing right mm-hmm. away, no matter. But if I'm not into the mood per se and you call me to put me on it, I never liked it. Mm-hmm. And I was not sure of in that sense. Yet still, I, when I'm singing and the spirit was with me, I'm singing. I knew it was there was a magic about it because I remember boys um, would sometimes, if there are girls around as a young man, I'm, I get in the spirit and I'm singing and that, that, that. They would start making noise. <laughs> <laughs> so they would start making noise so as to distract the attention. Right. right? So, I knew that that was magic and I, I felt it. A, a power that and a you, power a power that inside. When it is in and it's coming, it has a power above you that can reach out and touch people and emotions come out. You know, I see people cry. I see when I see people come up and I couldn't believe it. I want to take my hand and put it at her face Collective and it's tears. tears. Yeah. I see people who want to talk to me I'm feared, afraid, feel afraid. I don't know, like I'm overwhelmed, I don't know what to say, you know. Mm. I said, oh my gosh. I remember being on right. the road with you in California and a man drive all the way from West Virginia to come, come see the show. Man. Because he had never played in the U.S. and that was his only chance. And he drove all the way from West Virginia. So um, a, a, a testament to how many, how how deep you've reached certain people. Something like that happened in Spain. Somebody drove all the way from Barcelona to Valencia, which is like about six hours, just to come see. Yeah. So Kitty, I know you you grew up around these, this area a little bit and some of your schooling? Yes, um, I grew up in, well, I was born in Port Maria, St. Mary. This is the parish adjoining Portland, right? Mm-hmm. Family lived in Portland, so I would often holiday with them at time as a little boy. Got my father, his brothers and sister were very close. Right? So, in between Kingston, Portland, and St. Mary, that was more or less where I grew up. 
until about 12 and then I went to Clarendon my father went down there and he had to two different places the Panassas Estate and then Waterways Construction Company then I left there and came and resided in Kingston from then you know so never really seven. a transition between back and forth you're no. always you're always, always moving back and forth yeah. so it wasn't yeah. Country, 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 country and then no, town. it was in, in between yeah, all, like, all along. You know, I lived in familiar with Sal Lamar. Mm -hmm. I went to s my parents and me down there to a headmistress my mother knew. So I boarded with her in a place called Haddo and sort of stayed in Sal Lamar most of the time. I've stayed in Trelawney, I've been in Trelawney because you know, my mother's family outside of Clarkstown. So I grew up there again. And then when I started learning trade at Jam Track, every parish in the island had caterpillar tractors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we were sent out to these areas to repair the tractors. The agricultural. Instead, yeah, instead of mo sometimes the tractor would have been brought in on a low boy mm -hmm. and ref repaired at on site, right? Or if I start an engine, I take it out, or this or that. For many of the time, most of the times, tractors broke down in the country. So we go to the bauxite places, we go to the estate places, to the normal contractor who had some tractors to cut roads or do whatever, whatever. So I was by, I was able to the entire island in a sense. And then after that, I went into sales. So I was traveling the island again, working with a company called H.T. Hopwood, which had quite a number of um, items which we sold. Then afterwards, I was into real estate after I left that. I had the first multiple listing real estate company in Jamaica, my my partner. Um, because we had worked with H.I. Henriquez, Eddie Lai, C.D. Alexander, the Baileys, all of the major big real estate companies. So we had the each we had all of their listings. Mm -hmm. Plus we went out on the street two side, getting listings from people who might want to sell or to that and that, you know. Uh -huh. And I gave that up and I came out of that and went into the box site. Come apart and I had done surveying. And the bauxite, a new bauxite company opened up in um, St. Elizabeth called Revere Bauxite, which is where I went down now and worked with. Um, they say the PNP, the People's National Party, had um, the bauxite sort of franchise because it was Norman Manley who had made the deal for bauxite mm -hmm. in Jamaica, you know, to be exploited by Alcoa, Alki and Reynolds, <coughs> Kaiser. So, in 69, a new bauxite company was being made for and the JLP, the Jamaica Labour Party, got into that. And I, and I left the real estate and went down there to work because my friend got a surveyor's job and the pay was excellent. I went down, <laughs> I went down there with him just because, ah oh boy, the rude boys in a Jamaican at them time, there was sort of letting loose because confrontational politics politics was coming into being and to divide and separate the island. So yeah the first eleven bad man, the second eleven bad man, twenty one strong, twenty one shadow, inside and outside the mafia. That was how the JLP side it was set up. So the first eleven were the elder statesman as bad man and second 
it was where, as a youth, I could not believe that our trictions, politicians, right, could be so cruel as to, on a ship like Jamaica, we call it SS Jamaica. It's a ship in the ocean of life. So, when you have almost three million sailors on board the ship to row it to success, you have the water, you have the land, you have idle lands, and you have idle hands. So your stewardship given to, governed as caretakers of this ship, your captain, your pilot, and your management, how are you going to make a division and one is pulling east and is pulling west. Where's the ship Jamaica going to go? It will never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's the waga 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 waga. Right? But when we realized that this was all purposely intended because they did not want us here in Jamaica to come to our oneness. Main reason because, you know, when the SS Jesus got to Africa, <laughs> came back out across the middle passage and so many people died on the voyage here west so to the Caribbean carried beyond the sea to Caribbean he say in Ivar tongue to a place named Ja Mek Ya mm -hmm. so certain spirits which were brought here is the name given or term given by the Spanish maroon resistance force. What is resistance force? Resistance force is your immune system which fights against aggression and invasion. Now, I, the mind of I, must also defend against invasion and aggression physically and otherwise. So, from the beginning, everyone has this built-in immune system. You won't call it maroon, you won't call it whatever you won't call it. Mm -hmm. It's a resistant system to aggression and invasion. So, the animals in the jungle, you ha would have had to take up a stone or a stick and then you get a spear, and then you, afterwards you get your arrows, and um, da da da. And then you get um, Marco Polo's trip to China to get <laughs> gunpowder. So this is taken back, and the history of mankind makes this change. The first change to I was, in the sense, the first apartheid, because who had control of fire? was like never. Mm. So you sell out to that the first power, the next power was the wheel. Right? And who had the wheel had certain da 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 engineering skills coming on, this and that coming on. So when you recognize the mindset of your master puppeteers from them time, only seek to be vampiric, to suck the blood, the, the sweat and the tears of the masses. So in Jamaica, you know, we, we, we saw it as devious by our politicians who would divide and separate our country. Then we, I remember you now later on when Michael Manley comes in with this, um, this, um, low, low, what do you call it? Power to the people. Right? But within a year of his chanting that, 730-odd CIA agents came to Jamaica called Operation Buccaneer, purpose to undermine and destabilize. Right. So they don't want communism They to thought communism was what Manly was going communism. He's friends with Castro. But Castro, yes, they, 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 you know, anything. Right. And with Russia, Castro, I mean, they even told him, uh, why are you making friends with Russia? And I think his retort was that, I mean, Russia's got his faults, so like you, you know, so why should he not do right. 
Right. Well, well, while all this was going on, were you a part of, uh, you know, this like kind of peace movement, right? That you were, you were kind of starting out. Right. Uh, uh, what form first, the music yeah. or the movement? That's what I'm now. This music, the music was there, but within the music was a movement. Because when we left the box site and I would say lock up the bag of temptation to be reactionary and rebellious and destructive uh -huh. to the, because we said the only way one can do it is to go for the juggler, right? If the head of the stream is dirty, get rid of it, right? Da, da, da. And, but the revolution hadn't taken place in the minds and the heart of the people because there's no revolution unless the mind, the mind and the heart becomes aware. That's a revolution. Um. What does reggae music mean today? What does it mean today? Well, you know, the concepts of countries who adopt reggae. I see throughout the world now reggae roots growing in so many different countries. Countries that 20 years ago when I had only see one or two reggae bands. There's a hundred reggae bands now. In some places, 200 reggae bands. Yeah. It's like Brazil, Argentina, the amount of reggae bands. So more than what we have. Right. You go to France, there's maybe, uh, more reggae bands. Then Jamaica. Germany, than Jamaica. All over, man. <laughs> right, so Japan, all over these places, right. in Africa. That. So, where reggae has gone is um, taking its place as a, as a genre, a via of um, inspiring words, messages that has reggae meaning, regal music in that sense. So, real reggae doesn't, is not uplifting anything below the belt, mm. right? It's uplifting from the heart upwards, right? True. So the message of reggae in its true sense is to inspire, untangle a knot or a thing here in your head that you never realize to learn something from, right? And sometimes to point fingers, right? Because if the watchman sees the danger and does not warn the community, it's on his head or her head. He's not doing his job. You understand? So right, reggae right, right. is used by certain benevolent spiritual beings, in a sense, who would allow to see a balance in a mama earth, mm -hmm. right? Not the atrocities and the leadership which is misdirected, which has no care for mankind in a sense, right? Misleading savagery in a vampiric style, you know, sucking the blood, sweat and tears of the masses of the world for their greed to suit their purposes. So reggae tends to want to speak against these ills, right? And through the bingy house, you know, as I was saying, the immune spirit coming in, right? It came through the maroon spirit in Jamaica defying the Spanish and the English getting their own autonomy. Mm -hmm. In Haiti, right, from Jamaica goes Bookman to Haiti, mm -hmm. who stimulated the Toussaint Louverture and the fight against Napoleon and them. So, reggae is in a sense now the voice of a Marcus Garvey, the voice of a Haile Selassie or a Yashua. You know, mm. the word of like a Buddha. How, how does the younger generation now fit in? The, the well, reggae revival. The well, the revival is that the tree was sh cut down in the 80s by the destruction of Bob Marley, and, right, and then the slap is coming in to ride the reggae trail, which was out there carrying in derogatory and under the belt music to the masses and mind. So for a period of from 80s to early 90s, this was the destruction, in a sense, uh -huh. right? As how hip-hop was told to be 
promoting non positive right. but to promote Promoted. gangster guns to, drugs etc etc to, et to, to drive them right to right. so yeah so the whole kids in that period from Jamaica and through various areas of the world were subjugated to mental bombardment monkey sees monkey does mm -hmm. pirate speaks hears pirate speaks so your program a sect that is misled and misdirected reggae music in its true form is to try and reset reshape the mindset right offering a light in the tunnel per se right and so anyone who are the messengers, as you know, in the various fields mm. are generally persecuted and such. So hence reggae music, in its true sense, is not promoted properly through the various media, right? But you find certain style as a little more semi slacky some rude things, is allowed and more popular. Out, and more, and popular, more, more popular. Right? Yeah. So, but reggae, come out of the struggle of the maroon, the Three Finger Jacks, the Mar Marcus Garvey, mm. the Rastafarian movement. Yeah, so. And then in terms of uh, the imagery and, and the, uh, the message of it, we can go into our track, Illusions. Yeah, I think it, that has some relevance today, even though we tracked that, how many? That must have been back in 2006, um, I believe, 2006. No, two, 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 2005, 2006, <coughs> back uh, in the, the Yard. I, I, was, it was that the first day we met? I think it was the first was day we met. Was it 2006 or late? I think so. We started with the uh, Sound in 2002. Right. So maybe even earlier than it that. It was earlier than 2006. So it was probably 2004 so. then. Right. Yeah, it was a year after I graduated. So. Uh, no. Okay. How's that yeah. long now, Kitty? <laughs> yeah, that is a good while now. Illusions, delusions. Yeah, and, the, and that lightning striking. As Let's as tell that I, story. I, I, Let's I, I, sell that story <laughs> for the people. So, so we set up to record on, on China's veranda. And uh, I never know there was a real storm. It wasn't raining no. or, or anything. No, no. And yet, never really had any any indication indication inclination that there was anything yeah. like that right because i was set up to record it and there wasn't any up after that either right that was the only one at the time so it came as coinciding with the, the <laughs> illusion and so, the so what we're speaking about in the track illusions in the very beginning the intro there's a part um where kid says you don't know where you're going you don't know where you're gonna end up yep. you believe in one life of losers. losers and then all of a sudden and delusions I, as i'm saying delusions. delusions a large very loud thunderclap yeah lightning and thunderclap all happened the same at one. the same time <laughs> and, and you hear chin on the background screen so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and uh it's on the track. It, it, it yeah, never, it it, it, we, we never did it over. We just it was a moment, was and we just caught that that song was written in one take. It was just yeah. one take capturing a moment. Yeah, you know, illusions and illusions. We don't know what we're going to call it. What we call it? Um, <laughs> people what? know by so many so many names now. 